Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Increase your performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator up to 30%. The bloat your NVIDIA driver coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we get started in today's video, I just have one disclaimer. Going through the debloat process of your NVIDIA driver will remove all traces of NVIDIA GeForce as well as any other ancillary bloatware that they've installed on the driver. You will not be able to use any GeForce components after the debloat process. Completing the debloat process, you should notice a couple different things. Overall performance in Microsoft Flight Simulator should go up. You will also notice a big decrease in the amount of stutters that you get within the sim. Your FPS increase will vary depending on location, meaning in some airports I've noticed my FPS have a significant increase, and then in other airports I don't have an increase in FPS, but the overall performance and smoothness of the sim has increased dramatically. And that's ultimately what we're going for here, it really doesn't matter what type of FPS you're getting in the sim, as long as you have a buttery smooth gameplay, that's all that matters. So now that you understand what we're going to be doing today, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comments section and I'll get right back with you. If you enjoyed today's content and found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So now what I would like to do is make this a little bit interactive with everyone and show you just how much this is going to clean up your NVIDIA containers. Open up your task manager and scroll down to where your NVIDIA containers are. Now you will see I only have two containers open on my system. That's what you will have after this process is done. To start this process, there are a couple applications that we need to download first on your PC. All the links for these applications will be down below in the description, so make sure to check that out. The first application is called Display Driver Uninstaller. For those of you who are not familiar with this, what this application will do is completely remove any traces of any display driver. Now you might ask, why do I need to do this? Well, Anytime you install a driver, even if you click fresh install, it will still leave traces of the previous driver behind on your system. Now once you're on this page, it can be a little deceiving as to what to click to download the application. What we need to do is to scroll all the way down and we're going to go to where it says click here for download and support. We're going to click there and it's going to open up a download page for us. On the download page, we have two different options that we can choose. We can either use this as a portable application on your PC, meaning that you're not going to be installing this on your PC, but instead you're going to run this application from a folder on your PC. That's the way I always like to do this, so I'm going to download the portable option. The next application that we need to download is the NV Clean Install application. When you click on this link, it'll bring you up on this web page. To download the NV Clean Install application, we're going to go right at the very top and click Download. We can then select the region that you want to download this from. Now, for those of you who are using the portable option of the DDU, let me show you a little trick. If you double click on the extraction, make sure that you do not choose the Downloads folder. I found when I did that, for some reason, I just couldn't find it in my downloads folder. Elementary, my dear dum dum. So all I did was hit on the three bars, download it right to desktop, and then click OK. Now for the NV Clean Install application, however, this is not an installer. This is the actual application. So when you click on this, it will open the NV Clean Install application. What you can do with this is just drag this and drop it right on your desktop. All right, so now that we have both applications on our desktop, the next thing that we need to do is to download a valid copy of the NVIDIA driver. To do that, we're gonna to go to the NVIDIA website. I will also post links down below for this, and that will bring you up on this page. Now, we can either do this one of two ways. We can either go to the top for the NVIDIA driver downloads, 
input all the information about your graphics card, and then hit search, and that will bring up the requested driver type, either game ready driver or studio driver. The other option that we have for downloading drivers is to go down to the beta and older drivers and give that a click. Once here, you're going to enter all the information of your graphics card at the top, and then we're going to hit search. Below will give us a list of all the various drivers that are available for download. Now this particular section can be very useful, especially when they come out with new drivers and it creates all sorts of stuttery problems inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So now for me, I always choose the NVIDIA Studio driver. And the reason for that is, well, I do a lot of video editing and the Studio driver is the most stable driver that they have. Now that you have downloaded your driver, you need to find the location of where you have that downloaded. Now what we're going to do is create our own driver version to install on our PC. To do that, we're going to be enlisting the help of the NV Clean Install application. So we're just going to open the NV Clean Install. Hey, if you'd like to help out the channel further, go down below and tap on the thanks icon. Your support is greatly appreciated. For the first time opening the application, this is what it should look like on your screen. The next thing that we need to do is select the driver that we had just downloaded from NVIDIA. To do that, we're going to go over and click Use Driver Files on Disk. From here, we need to choose the driver in which we want to create an installation file for. The installation file will then populate in the box below. Once we're finished here, we can go down and hit the Next button. This page will allow us to choose which options we would like to install for our NVIDIA driver. Notice at the very bottom, these are all the GeForce Experience components, and we do not have any of those checked. So now, which boxes do we check here? What I recommend to do is to go down and hit the Recommended button, and that will install the very basic files that we're going to need to run your graphics card. If you have a USB-C port on your graphics card and you want it to operate, you must tick the USB-C driver option for that. If you're on a laptop, you may also want to install the Optimus files. And then we'll go down and hit the next button. It is now creating the installation file for our driver. Once that is finished, it will now allow us to choose a couple tweaks for the driver installation file. So let's go through these. At the very top, we're going to disable the installer telemetry and advertising. We're going to check the unattended express installation, as well as check the allow automatic reboot if needed. The next three options, we do not need to check any of these. You can enable the DLSS indicator if you would like that information showing on your screen when you have DLSS in use, but I think it takes up valuable screen space, so I just leave that off. Below that, I would also recommend to disable the multiplane overlay. Now, we're not going to need this because we're getting rid of GeForce, and the MPO has been known to cause flickering, stutters, black screens, gray screens, so it's just a good idea to turn this off. Below the MPO, we have disable ANZL. I would also recommend to do that. This is an option that is used in GeForce to allow you to take screenshots and things like that. Again, we're getting rid of all of that, so we do not need ANZL. And then below that at the very bottom, we want to tick on Show Expert Tweaks. Now this section is very important that you follow exactly because I've had a lot of people tick the wrong boxes here and then wonder why they do not have an NVIDIA control panel once they've done this installation. So please follow this very carefully. We're going to tick on the first box to disable driver telemetry. Do not check disable NVIDIA container. If you do, you will not have the NVIDIA control panel after the installation. Below that, we're going to check on disable NVIDIA HD audio device sleep timer. We're also going to check on enable message signal interrupts, and we're going to change the interrupt policy to high. We're also going to check the box to disable the HDCP, and then we're going to leave the last box unchecked. I believe this is for developers, so unless you're a developer, you probably don't need that one. And then if we go all the way to the very bottom, make sure Rebuild Digital Signature is checked. 
and then we're going to check the box below that. You also need to select the automatically accept the driver unassigned warning below that. And that's pretty much it. We can now hit the next button and it will build the installation file for us. Now, before we go any further here, we need to create a new file folder on our desktop. And that is so that we can place the new driver installation files into. So we're going to right click on the desktop, click new folder, and you can call it whatever you want. I'll just call it driver test. And now you can come over to the NV clean install, click show in folder. This will now show us our new debloated driver that we had just created. Now what we want to do is to copy all of these files and then we can drag and drop all of this in our new folder we had just created. We are now complete with the NV clean install application. Now for those of you who may ask, well, wait a minute, after I do the debloat, how do I revert back to my original NVIDIA driver if I don't like the results? And that's fairly easy. All you need to do is to go to the download section or wherever you downloaded your NVIDIA driver and then just double click on the driver application and it will run the complete installation. For the next part of this tutorial, we will be utilizing the display driver uninstaller application we downloaded earlier. We will also need to turn off our Wi-Fi or internet to our PC. So you will go to your internet and disconnect your Wi-Fi or internet. That's going to be critical because when your PC reboots after it deletes the display driver, you don't want your PC to automatically scavenge the web to re-download a new driver. We want to install our own version. The next thing that we need to keep in mind here when using the display driver uninstaller application is that we need to run our PC in safe mode so that we can remove all traces of the display driver. For your convenience, in the description, I have posted a link to this website. We'll show you exactly how to reboot your PC, whether Windows 11 or 10, in safe mode. But you know me, I'm not going to rely on that. We're going to do it together right here on screen. So to reboot your PC in safe mode, we're going to go down to the start icon. We're going to tick on the power icon. And now you're going to hold down the shift button on your keyboard and hit restart. I do have one tip here. If you're using a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse and are not using the USB dongles that came with them, you're going to need to plug in the USB dongle that came with your keyboard so that you can move around these menus. In any case, on the first menu, it's going to ask you to choose an option. We're going to select Troubleshoot, hit the Enter button. In the Troubleshoot menu, you will go down and select Advanced Options. In the Advanced Options menu, you will select Startup Settings. And then in the Startup Settings menu, you will hit Restart. Once your computer restarts, it will bring you up another blue screen asking you how you want to start up your PC. You're going to select option 4 or enable safe mode. So now that you're in safe mode and we are on the desktop, we can now open the DDU application and then we're going to run the display driver uninstaller application. For your first time opening the DDU, it may give you some options here to choose. I don't switch any of these. I leave them as factory and hit the close button at the bottom. If you are not in safe mode, you will also get this pop up that's going to say, hey, you're not in safe mode. The first thing that we want to do here is to select our device type. This is going to be a GPU, so we'll select GPU. We're going to select NVIDIA. The last thing that we need to do here is to hit the clean and restart button at the very top and that will clean all traces of our current display driver out of our system. It will then reboot our PC back in normal mode. Now once your PC does reboot, the scaling on your monitor still may be a little bit off, and that's because we have not installed the driver yet. Keep in mind that if you're a multi-monitor, all of your other monitors are going to be black at this point, and you're only going to see what is on your main screen. From here, we're going to locate the file folder we had created earlier on our desktop with our debloated version of the NVIDIA driver. And then you will go down and click on the Setup Application, and that will start the installation process 
for your new NVIDIA driver. Let it go for a little while. This process could take five to 10 minutes. Once it's finished, all of your resolutions should be correct on your screen again. And if you're on multi-monitor, your other monitors should now show as normal. Now, please keep in mind that anytime you install your NVIDIA driver using this method, you will need to open the NVIDIA control panel and readjust all of your settings in there. And now that you're finished, launch into Microsoft Flight Simulator and let me know what kind of results you are getting. Thanks everybody for joining us on the channel. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down below in the comments section. And as always, if the video helped you out or you found it useful, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.